Hello and welcome to SBK22. Finally, finally, we've got a new World Superbike game. We've been waiting 10 years, but today SBK22 has finally launched and we get to play with some superbikes once again. So today I'll be just doing a little bit of gameplay and just sort of giving off my first impressions. Now, of course, everything we've seen sort of in the build-up to this game does point towards the fact it's going to be very similar to the MotoGP games. But now that we finally get to play it, we can talk about the physics, which, of course, is pretty much the most important part. The graphics, of course, they were always going to be pretty similar, and the bikes, you know, obviously are different bikes, but they, they may still feel a bit similar because the engine is similar. But we'll see. We'll see in terms of the physics. But first of all, we will quickly have a look through some of these menus, although they do look rather familiar. So these menus are really giving me sort of like MotoGP 21 vibes with sort of the, the the riders sort of split across a few different screens so you can definitely tell it's kind of built on an old MotoGP 21 build by the looks of it. But if we look obviously we've got all the riders from the season so we've got Top Rack, Locatelli, Ray, Lowe's, Batista, Rinaldi, Redding, Van der Mark, Laquona, Vierge, Nazani, Gerloff, Eugene Laverty, Loris Baz, Leandro Bacardo, Hafi Sirin, Philip Ertel, Christoph Ponson, Luca Mayas, Axel Bassani, Oliver Koenig, Luca Bernardi, Leon Haslam, which was something I was pretty confused about when they did the stream like about a week ago, where they were showing off the different features and I saw Haslam in the game, I was a bit thrown off, but he's actually the rider that's done the most races on this bike, so I think that's why they picked him. And then you've got Roberto Tamburini as well. So obviously Haslam does look a bit out of place there with his uh, his rider picture because it's just edited onto uh, a 3D render of him. So I think for my first try, just to test the physics, I'm just going to go as Johnny Ray at Donington. But we will quickly just go through all the tracks first. So you've got Aragon, Assen, Estoril, Misano, Donington, so Most in the Czech Republic, Magnicor, Catalonia, Portimao. We've got San Juan. Mandalika and then Phillip Island. So there's only 12 tracks of the game, of course, because there's World Superbikes, they don't go to so many circuits. But we'll try out Donington Park first, turn off all these assists, and we'll be heading straight onto the track. And I'll be giving you my first thoughts of the physics. So here we are then down at Donington Park. And I've got to say, it is quite nice to see a bit more of a modern version of Donington Park, because of course, in the MotoGP games, it's always the historic one that you get to see. And it's been a while since the last ride game, which I suppose is a bit more of an up to date version. But even still, those versions are a little bit out of date, so the curb colour seems to be correct obviously now with the, the new red colours and all the right sponsors from the World Superbike round. Now in terms of the tyres, I'm not exactly sure what to go with because I can see there we've got the SC1 on the front and SC0 on the rear. So that's actually interesting, so of course they're actually going by the actual compound names that they have in World Superbikes, which obviously are the different Pirelli ones, SC1, SC0, you've got SC Rain, things like that, rather than soft, medium and hard. But I think it is going to tell us anyway. Yeah, it's going to tell us what they are. What they are. So it's a soft on the front and a medium... Uh, no, a soft on the rear as well. So actually, for the rear tyre, you've got super soft, soft, and soft development tyre. So they've actually got development tyres in this game. That's pretty cool. And then on the front, yeah, you've only got a soft or medium. So you actually can't go medium, medium in this game. There's no medium tyre, at least in the time trial mode. So we'll head out onto the track and uh, let's see what we think. So immediately what stands out to me is the sound. Obviously we've not really heard a proper good sounding ZX-10 and I've gone off the track. Literally the first corner I've done, I've gone off the track. So the brakes, they uh, certainly feel quite weak uh, immediately. I tried to use a little rear brake there, didn't seem to do an awful lot. Assuming that I've got my controls set up correctly, that should have been the rear brake anyway. I'm going to have to turn one. It certainly seems to be. But yes, the rear is skating. The brakes do feel very, very poor. But I think that's because I'm so used to the MotoGP game. Of course, World Superbikes using steel brakes rather than carbon aren't going to be as powerful. So I think that's going to be something uh, worth getting used to. Gotta say, this version of Donington does look really nice, actually. It does look like a step up from the, uh, the MotoGP version that we have. And obviously the versions that we've seen in Ride previously, but I suppose those are slightly old versions now, because the last Ride game was 2020. So it's been a... Been a good while since this track's probably been updated, but I'm, oh, I'm, I am really struggling to get this stopped. So I think that'll be the first thing you guys notice is the sort of trying to get the bike stopped. The the brakes, the performance is not so high, which again I'm going to put down to the steel brakes. And I know I'm absolutely all over the place, but trust me, we've still done a few laps. I'll be uh, taking the correct lines again. So down towards the foggy S's then on the brakes. Again, I've probably I've misjudged that. Yeah, 
It's gonna it's gonna take a few laps, I think, to get used to these brakes. Once I sort of got a bit more up to speed, I'll uh Oh the bike snapped then as well. Like I was gonna say though, once I've done uh, got a bit more up to speed, I'll do a lap uh, without talking so that you can actually hear the sounds of the bike, because I was actually talking about the sounds, wasn't I, initially? And it's uh, nice that you hear the ZX10, because I suppose you don't really get to hear anything like this uh, in any of the other milestone games, really. You do get it in Ride, but I think it's an improvement over the Ride sounds by a decent margin. And in terms of the MotoGP games, of course, there's no Kawasaki and GP anymore, so you're not going to hear an engine that sounds similar, because obviously the Ducati and Yamaha, whilst they're not the MotoGP bikes, are going to sound more similar to the GP counterparts than obviously Kawasaki is, because Kawasaki, they don't have one. Although the Yamaha is probably a bit different. I reckon the Ducati, though, is going to sound very similar to the uh, MotoGP Ducati with them both being V4s. It's been a better lap already than the last one. It's just it's just taking me a little bit of time to get used to the, uh, the braking. Uh, I've not played the any milestone game for about a week or so, probably, to be honest, because I've been playing GP bikes a little bit more recently, so that's also another thing to get used to, and I've been playing it at this circuit, so it probably doesn't help initially. But I'm, I'm now starting to feel like I'm kind of getting there with the brakes, but definitely my first thought so far it's definitely down to the brakes. I might have a mess around with some of these electronic settings as well, because the, the bike does feel very planted on the rear coming out of corners. But that's because obviously I've got the max traction control on so far. So if I turn it down a little bit, I might be able to get a bit more slide on, because I actually feel like it's quite intrusive on power 5. I think we are uh, on traction control 5, sorry. I do feel like I'm actually not getting that much power out of the corner. The bike feels quite floaty, sort of across the track. You don't get a lot of feedback. Uh, from that, like when I'm actually going from sort of one side, well, when I'm just kind of moving across the track, I don't feel a lot of feedback again. I've sort of cra oh, I've crashed. That's my first crash on SBK22. At least it took a couple of laps this time. I think when I uh, tried MotoGP22, I think I fell off on like the first corner, so it's an improvement over there. But it's probably just because it's not such a big step as, uh, um, you know, between the MotoGP games, it does feel kind of like a halfway house, I guess, between uh, MotoGP22 and something a little bit different. Again, I can't give my full feeling on the physics till I'm right on the limit, because that's when you do really feel them. But so far, my main takeaway is just uh, the brakes seem quite weak, which again I'll explain by the difference in brakes from the MotoGP bikes, obviously using the steel brakes. And then the bike across the track, there's just not much feedback, and it seems to move across the track quite easily. It just, it just sort of glides quite well across the circuit, but then you don't get much vibration from it. Like, I'm not really getting a lot of feedback until I'm um, actually properly in the braking zone and the rear is really sliding. It almost it feels a bit more similar to MotoGP 21 in the aspect that the rear steps out a lot on the brakes. And that was something I've struggled with a lot on that game. Uh, so far I've had the, the rear is kind of braking traction a lot. And again, like I did say before, of course, the menu seemed pretty similar. So I think this probably was uh, sort of based on MotoGP 21 as a base. Uh, that's, that's my feeling at least. Yeah, the, the rear just breaks traction uh, very, very easily, so if you like to merge GP21, I feel like the uh, the physics are a little bit more similar to that than GP22. The braking might be a bit more... In fact, actually, to be honest, I went pretty much full brake on the way into that turn one, didn't get a stoppy or anything. Now, I've never really struggled with the stoppies quite as much as a lot of other people have. But to be honest, if you liked GP21 but disliked the stoppies, you actually might not mind this physics because the brakes are not as powerful, so you actually don't get the stoppies. So you're going to have to brake a little earlier, sure. But if you brake harder, it doesn't seem to bring the rear wheel off the ground so much. But the rear does seem to brake traction in a similar way. Now that I turn the traction control down at least. Or even though, even on traction control 5 though, it did feel like that uh, on the way into the corners. On the way out, you've got plenty of grip. So that feels a little bit more like 22, uh, the fact that you've got more grip coming out of a corner, because I remember on GP21 there was very little grip out of the turns. But again, th this could be also down to the tyre combination slightly, because we've got a very soft tyre on the rear, so that could be why we've got rear grip sort of on the way out of the corner, so I, as I get a bit of a stoppy in there. So as I've just been saying, there's no stoppies, I immediately get one. Oh, again. Yeah, the rear does seem to break traction so easily, although, again, that, I suppose there's a bit of a thing on 22 as well. This is a bit of a thing in Milestone games, really, that the rear breaks a bit more traction, and well, the, the traction breaks on the rear pretty easily. I'm getting a few more stoppies now that I'm pushing the front a little bit more. So that's uh, something that's worth noting. Now, obviously, I do play a lot of Milestone games, so there might be some stuff that you notice that I haven't particularly noticed. Like, it might be something that's just in every Milestone game, so I'm just used to it now. But when I was pushing a bit more there, I have just crashed this lap, but uh, I was pushing a bit more, and I did notice that the change of direction does still seem rather slow, so if that's something you did dislike, that seems to be here to stay. 
the curbs also not seeming so friendly because I did absolutely high side myself on a curb. So I just thought I was going to run off the edge of it and get a, like, lose my lap and then I was all of a sudden on the floor which I didn't really expect. So the usual sort of tropes seem to be there, like everything really I'm saying so far. So something I've just decided to test on this lap is the RPM. Uh, in MotoGP 22, the RPM was actually is kind of broken. So when you get a stoppy, for example, when the rear wheels are not on the floor, the RPM doesn't decrease at all anymore. It just stays constant. That's not an issue in this game. So probably one of the biggest problems for MotoGP 22, which is what makes the physics so horrendous in that game, isn't actually present in this game. So it's really reinforced in my opinion. I think this is uh, sort of based on the MotoGP 21 physics. It does feel a bit more that way. Which, to be honest, is actually a step back forward from MotoGP 22 because, well, MotoGP 22 is MotoGP 22. I do feel like some of the aspects from 22 are there, like the rear grip, for example. But again, like I said, that could be literally just down to the fact that the tyres are different because, of course, these are Pirellis rather than Michelins. Now, I know, of course, probably they're not going to be that different in terms of how they've made the game, let's be honest. But even still, the, the soft tyre, uh, the rear, the tyre I've got on the rear right now is pretty soft. So yeah, it really does feel a lot more like GP21, which is actually not something I'd ever say would relieve me, but after playing my GP22, it's just more it's just more rideable because the bike is more predictable. Mainly just down to the RPM thing. So what that RPM issue really causes, like the one I was on about earlier with the when the rear tires on the off the ground, the RPM doesn't uh, decrease. I know that probably sounds like a bit of a technical thing to say to some people. I know some people probably laugh at me saying that, but really that will be a bit of a technical term. Basically, it doesn't. the bike doesn't stop correctly, so when the rear tyre hits the floor again, it will now push you forward because it's now travelling a lot faster than the front tyre. Effectively, is what what is happening in MotoGP 22, which is why uh, one of the re main reasons why the game is so front-limited and you lose the front all the time is because the rear tyre, when it comes off the ground, even if it's very slightly, it doesn't lose any speed. When it comes back down, it's now travelling a lot faster than the front tyre. But I feel like I'm getting there now, so I'll try and do a lap without speaking. So there we go then, I finally did a clean lap, I don't know if it's actually, oh I've just crashed immediately afterwards, but yeah, I finally did a clean lap, well a good one without too many mistakes in it, again there's definitely more time to find, like I said it was of course my first laps on the game, but I think that's pretty much where I'll end off this video, so I hope you have enjoyed that one, if you are new to the channel do please like and subscribe because it really does help out the channel and I'll, I'll be doing a lot more videos on SBK22, I'll be doing a career mode on it very shortly, probably be going out either today or tomorrow the the first episode of that. If there's anything specific you want to see or know as well, do let me know in the comments because I'm more than happy to do some specific gameplay that you requested, if that's wet weather gameplay or certain a certain rider at a certain track or anything like that. You know, I'm more than happy to do that, especially in these early stages whilst we're all trying to learn the game. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.